What's going on guys, welcome back. So I, I got these new markers recently. Um, I'm not sure how the final result is gonna be for the video, so let me know in the comments below if they were adequately visible or not. Uh, I like them because they're really small and cheap, so I can write a little finer than usual. Uh, a lot of colors, and they're also like double-edged, like a, like a war glaive or something. It's pretty cool. Anyway, today we're talking about the classification of finite simple groups. The proof of which is the longest proof in all of mathematics as of now. Uh, over 10,000 pages, about 100 mathematicians have contributed to this proof over the course of decades. But before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare reached out to me a while back and asked if I would be interested in doing some sponsored content. And since then, I've been kind of playing with the site myself and checking out some of their courses. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. They offer over 27,000 courses on any topic you could possibly imagine. And the courses are packed with content. They were a lot longer than I was expecting. And I've found courses written by or designed by people that I'm actually already familiar with that maybe I follow on YouTube or whatnot. So overall, I'm really impressed with the site and I highly recommend you check it out, especially if you're one of the lifelong learner types. This totally removes any barriers for learning what you want to learn, so definitely check it out. If you use our code down below, you can get two free months of premium membership. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get started. All right, so what is the classification of finite simple groups and why would we want to classify finite simple groups? Well, the classification of finite simple groups basically shows that every finite simple group can be placed in one of four categories up to isomorphism. In other words, we sort of completely understand what all of the finite simple groups are in the sense that we have all of the possibilities for what a finite simple group can be. Now, this is important because finite simple groups or in a sense the building blocks of finite groups in general through composition series. So since we've been able to characterize the finite simple groups, we learn more about finite groups in general because we have characterized these sort of building blocks. Now there's a nice analogy to be made here, so let's remind ourselves what a simple group is. First of all, what is a normal subgroup of a group? So if a subgroup is invariant under conjugation from any element of G, that is a normal subgroup. If a subgroup is normal, that allows us to take the quotient group. If N is just a subgroup and not a normal subgroup, we can't take the quotient group. We can't take G quotient N. This won't be a well-defined group. Now a simple group is a group that has no normal subgroups except for the group itself and the trivial group. So G is a simple group if the only normal subgroups are the trivial group, the group of just the identity element, and G itself. So if the group G is simple, there's only two quotient groups that we can form. We can take G quotient with itself and G quotient with the trivial group. Now, if we quotient G with itself, we get the trivial group. And if we quotient G with the trivial group, we get G itself. So there's a really nice analogy here. A simple group has only two normal subgroups. And so we only have two quotients that we can take. We can kind of think of these normal subgroups as sort of being factors of the group G, giving us only these two quotients. So simple groups form a nice analogy with prime numbers. A prime number has only two factors, one and itself. G has only two simple groups, trivial group and itself. There's only two quotients we can take of a prime number, divide the prime number by itself and get one, or divide the prime number by one and get itself. So there's a nice analogy between simple groups and prime numbers. And just like prime numbers sort of build the other numbers through a certain product, Simple groups build the other finite groups through composition series. So there's a really strong analogy there. It's not perfect, but it's still there. All right, let's start categorizing the finite simple groups. The first category is the cyclic groups of prime order.
Now it's clear that these are going to be simple groups because by Lagrange's theorem, a subgroup's order must divide the order of the group itself. So not only does a cyclic group of prime order have no normal subgroups other than the trivial group in itself, it doesn't have any subgroups besides the trivial group and itself. So these are clearly simple groups. The second category is alternating groups of degree five or higher. So remember that the symmetric group of say degree five is the set of bijections that can be put on a five element set and the alternating group of that group that consists of the even order permutations. The third category is called the groups of Lie type. These are finite groups that are related to Lie groups in general. And the fourth category, which is my favorite category, is the sporadic groups. The sporadic groups are basically the groups that don't fit into any of the other three categories. They're just totally unique. There are 27 of them, and this includes the infamous monster group that number file talked about. So this is the interesting class of groups to me. They just, they're just weird and unique and it's pretty cool. So why did this proof take so many pages and so long to write? Well, it's just because of the nature of what we're trying to do. We're trying to characterize all of the finite simple groups, a very broad object, into one of these four categories. So we essentially need to show that either a finite simple group is isomorphic to some cyclic group of prime order, some alternating group of degree five or higher, some group of Lie type, or one of the 27 sporadic groups. And that has to be done just in general. So that's just a long process. This is very useful in group theory and other fields since groups act on other mathematical objects because by characterizing the finite simple groups, we can sometimes use this theorem, the classification of finite simple groups, in a sort of a proof by exhaustion sort of way. We can check that something holds for all these, all these, all these, and all 27 of these. So that's why this is such a big deal and was something that people worked very hard for a long time towards accomplishing. The classification of finite simple groups is basically the periodic table of mathematics. Here we have these very general things called finite groups. They can act on other mathematical structures and touch nearly every field of mathematics. And we've been able to fully characterize their building blocks, the finite simple groups. These are like the elements of the periodic table, whereas finite groups in general are sort of like compounds formed from those elements that then go on to you know, interact with everything. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.